a vile pin. Oh, vile. How did I do? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, you should have used the subjunctive here and here. Should I? I thought, well, look here. I didn't use it here. Mrs. Van Dyne, may I try on your coat? No, Anna. Oh, it's all right. All girls like dressing up. But be careful with it. My father gave me this the year before he died. He always bought the best that money could buy. Mrs. Van Dyne. Did you have a lot of boyfriends before you were married? Anna dear, that's a personal question. It's not courteous to ask personal questions. Oh, I don't mind. Our house was always swarming with boys. When I was a girl, we had a... Oh, really... God, here we go again. Oh, shut up, you. One summer, we had a big house in Hilversum, and the boys came buzzing around like bees around a jam pot. When I was 16, we were wearing our skirts very short in those days. I had good-looking legs. I still do. I may not be as pretty as I used to be, but I still have my legs. What do you think, Mr. Frank? All right, all right, we see them. I'm not asking you. I'm asking Mr. Frank. Mother, for heaven's sake. Oh, I embarrass you, do I? Well, I just hope the girl you marry has as good. My father used to worry about me with so many boys hanging around. He used to say to me, if any of them gets fresh, you tell him. Remember, Mr. So-and-so, remember, I'm a lady. Remember, Mr. So-and-so, remember, I'm a lady. I do wish you wouldn't talk that way in front of her. Don't you know she puts it all down in that diary of hers? What if she does? I'm only telling the truth. Would you mind, Paige, if I move you over to the couch? I'm listening out for me. I'll hear her the instant she arrives. Haven't you finished yet? No. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. All right, all right. I'm a dunce. I'm a hopeless case. Why do I bother? You are not hopeless. Don't speak that way. It's just that you don't have anyone to help you like the girls do. Maybe you could help Peter, Mr. Frank. Well, I'm sure that no, his I'm father not, is... Not me. I can't do anything with him. You won't listen to me. You go ahead if you want. Oh. How about it, Peter? Shall we make our school co-educational? Oh, you are an angel, Mr. Frank. An angel. Mm. I don't know why I didn't meet you before I met that one there. Here, sit down, Mr. Frank. Mm. Now, Peter, you listen to Mr. Frank. I think it might be better, Peter, if we were to go and work in your room. I'm sure you could concentrate far better in there. Yes, you're right, Mr. Frank. That'll be fine. That's right, Peter. You go in there. You listen to Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank's a highly intelligent man. <clears throat> Shh! I can't hear if anyone's down there. Isn't it bad enough in here without your sprawling all over the place, taking up all the room? Oh, you are getting so bad tempered. I think it's because you smoke so much. If you didn't smoke so much, you would be so bad-tempered. Smoking? Am I smoking? Do you see me smoking? Don't tell me you've used up all those cigarettes already. All those cig... One package? Me pony bought me one package. Well, good. I'm glad. It's a filthy habit. Anyway, couldn't be a better chance to give up. What's a golden opportunity oh, to rid yourself of it, please. You're smoking up all our money. You know that, don't you? Will you please shut up? I am sick and tired of all... And what do you think you're staring at? I've never heard grown-ups quarrel before. I thought only children quarrelled. This isn't a quarrel. It's a discussion. And I've never met a child as rude as you before. Me? Rude? Anna, will you bring me some more wool, please? I'm 
must remember when meat comes to ask her to bring me some more wool. I need some soap. And some hairpins. If you like, I could make a list of everything we need so we can give it to meat when she comes. Have you some library books for meat when she comes? So wonder meat has a life of her own, the way you make her run errands for us. She's all we've got. I can't even bear to think of what would happen if we didn't have me. Did you know she was engaged? His name is Dirk. And Meep's afraid the Nazis will ship him off to Germany to work in one of their war plants. That's what they're doing nowadays. They pick up the young Dutchman... Don't you ever get tired of talking. Suppose you try keeping still for five minutes. Okay. Just five minutes. Ella, there's your milk. Talk, talk, talk. I've never heard such a child. This one. Every evening is the same. Talk, talk, talk. Where the hell is What my... are you looking for? My pipe. Have you seen my pipe? Well, it's a pipe. You haven't got any tobacco. But at least I'll have something to hold in my mouth. Margot, have you seen my pipe? I'm sure I saw it on the table last night, Mr. Fanta. I know. That's where I thought I'd left it. Anna, have you seen my pipe? Anna? Anna, dear, Mr. Van Dyne is speaking to you. Am I allowed to talk now? You're the most irritating girl I've ever... The problem with you is, you've been spoilt. What you need is a good old-fashioned spanking. Remember, Mr. So-and-so, remember, I'm a lady. Why aren't you nice and quiet like your sister Margot? Why do you have to show off all the time? Let me give you a little advice, young lady. Boys don't like that kind of thing in a girl, you know that? A man likes a girl who will listen to him once in a while. A domestic girl. A girl who likes to cook and sew and... Yuck! Not me. I'm going to be remarkable when I grow up. I'm going to Paris. Paris? I'm going to study music and art. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be a famous dancer or singer or something wonderful. <gasps> this cost. Do you? And now look at it. Look at it. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Van Damme. It was an accident. I could just kill you for this. I could just kill you. <laughs> Petronella, Lethia, come back. The supper, come back. Anna, you mustn't behave in that way. It was an accident, Mother. Anyone can have an accident. I don't mean that. I mean the answering back. You must not answer back. They are our guests. We must always try and show the greatest courtesy to them. We are all living here under terrible tension. That is why we must control ourselves. You don't see Margot getting into arguments with them, do you? Watch Margot. She is always courteous. She's never familiar. She keeps her distance. And they respect her for it. Try to be like Margot. And have them walk all over me the way they do her. No thanks. I've got to fight for myself. It isn't necessary to fight to do it. Margot does it Margot, Margot, Margot. That's all I ever hear. How wonderful Margot is. Why aren't you like Margot? Oh, come on, Anna. That's not fair. Everything she does is right, and everything I do is wrong. You're all against me. And you, worst of all. How much longer we can go on living like this? I can't seem to say a word to Anna these days without her flying at me. You know Anna. In half an hour she'll be out here laughing and joking. It's not just her. It's those Van Dams. I told your father it wouldn't work, but no. He had to ask them. He said he owed it to them. Well, he knows now that I was right. These quarrels, this endless bickering. It is hard. For everyone, Mother. But it's probably hardest for Anna. Don't worry about it, please. You know she never really means the things she says half the time, and always regrets it afterwards. After all, she is the youngest, and she... Shh. It's me. Every time I hear that sound, my heart stops.
Thank you, Margot. Has the list been? Yes. I'll get Anna. There's our list. Anna? Anna meets here. Is that me? Yes, Father's gone down to let her in. Last, I'll have some cigarettes. Mr Van Dunn, I can't tell you how sorry I'm about your wife's coat. Anna really should have been more careful. She... Oh, she'll be all right. Is there anything I can do? Milk can leave such a terrible mark. Please, don't worry, it's quite all right. Meep, how good it always is to see you. How are you, Meep? Do you have my cigarettes? No, I'm sorry. Not tonight. What is it, me? Usually when I come up here, I try to bring you some little bit of good news. How well the war is progressing, that sort of thing. What's the use of telling you the bad news when there's nothing you can do about it? But today something has happened, which I think you ought to know about. Dirk, my Dirk, my fiancé, you know, came to see me a little while ago. He has several Jewish friends living near him, and he says they're beginning to disappear. Children come back from school to find their parents gone. Hundreds are now being deported. People you and I know. The Steens, the vessels. Oh. oh. They get a letter telling them to report on such and such a day at such and such a time. To bring only what they can carry in a rucksack. If they refuse to go, the police come and drag them from their homes and ship them off to some place called Mauthausen. Some sort of camp. You didn't know that things had got so much worse. Last time you came here, Meep, you said things were going to improve. You said that the war wouldn't last much longer and, and that we'd soon be out of here and back in our own homes. Back at school, out of here. I'm sorry. Please forgive me for speaking so, but I thought you should know. Meep, do you know the Duval family? Do you know what has happened to them? Yuppie and I were in the same class. Yuppie's my best friend. Annika, they've been taken too. Taken? With all the others, Anna. I'm so oh, sorry. No, not Yuppie. There were some people called Wagner. Elsa and Josef Wagner. They live near us. We saw a lot of each other. Don't tell us that they've gone too. Me? I really think we should put this off until another time. But the Wagners are our best friends. Elsa and I We all to... have many questions we want to ask me. But it can wait until another time. Meanwhile, we must thank you for being our provider. Now, have fun. What about supper? I don't think I'm very hungry this evening. <laughs>